we're going to look at the pH and how it changes as we titrate a strong acid with a strong base. And of course, this could work in reverse. We could titrate a strong base with a strong acid. In the upcoming slides, we'll look at the calculations of pH and how they're complicated if we have a weak acid titrated with a strong base or a strong base titrated with a weak acid. But to start with, the most simplest case is a strong acid and a strong base. Remember, a strong acid has no equilibrium established. A strong acid, there's 100% dissociation into H plus and Cl minus, and the same thing with a strong base. 100% dissociation. So I've taken this equation, this should say AQ, AQ, liquid, and AQ, and I've written the complete ionic equation here, taking each ionic compound and breaking it up into the ions. So our beaker of HCl would have the dissociated ions and the same with the sodium hydroxide. And the net ionic equation for any acid-base reaction is always H plus plus OH minus, giving us H2O. The chloride is a fantastic spectator ion. It does nothing. And the same with the sodium. So for the same reasons that these ions in salts don't affect the pH, Sodium is never going to react with water and make intact sodium hydroxide, and chloride would never react with water and make the intact HCl. Now, when we have studied acid-base chemistry in the past, we've assumed that, um, well, at least in introductory and general chemistry, that this balanced equation occurs um, and we reach the end point. So if we've done a titration, the end point is when we've used up all the HCl by adding the exact number of moles of NaOH. So if we have one mole of HCl, we have to add one mole of sodium hydroxide in order to make one mole of water. So the end point is when the titration turns pink. That's if we have the phenolphthalein indicator in there. And what we're going to do different is we are going to start with a, let me try to draw a rough picture of a burette. And in the burette, we're going to have the sodium hydroxide. So this is the blue stuff. So I'm just kind of filled up with NaOH. And I just use blue because the pH paper would look blue. And then if we have an acid in the Erlenmeyer flask, and here, here's where our HCl would be. And so that would be, the acid would be there. So before we start the titration, we could calculate the pH of the solution. So um, before titration begins, pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of the HCl, which is the same as the concentration of the H+. Plus. It's because that's a strong acid. The H plus concentration is equal to the acid concentration. Now, as we begin to add sodium hydroxide to this solution, couple things are going to occur. So if we keep track um, of this, what we're going to need to do is always start out with our initial moles of acid. And that's going to be the molarity of HCl times the volume of HCl. And that's going to equal our moles of HCl that we started with. And these can both vary. Generally, our volume is a very exact number, like 25 milliliters or 20 milliliters. We're the ones that measure that out and put that in here. And then what we're going to do during the titration, we're going to have to calculate the number of moles of 
base that we add. So the number of moles of NaOH added is also going to be molarity times volume. So the molarity of NaOH times the volume of NaOH, recall that our volume in each case has to be in liters, so we'll generally have to change from milliliters to liters, but this will equal moles of the NaOH added. So we're going to have to do that and, re and recall that this is also going to equal the moles of the HCl that's neutralized or gone. So that, the number of moles of base that we add is going to neutralize that same number of moles of HCl. And that's what then our H, the, the moles of NaOH that we add will combine with that exact same number of moles of H plus from the acid and make water. So to find the, we're going to have to do this and use this to calculate the moles of our HCl that's left. So our initial moles of acid, we'll always come back to that, we'll subtract off the number of moles of the NaOH added, and so this will be our number of moles of HCl that's left, or that has not been neutralized. So as we add our base, some of this is going to make water, and then we'll still have excess acid up to the equivalence point. So to do a pH calculation, we're going to take the number of moles of our acid left and divide that by the total volume. So when we add sodium hydroxide, we're going to change the volume. And again, our volume has to be converted into liters. So this will be the new concentration of the HCl. And that will also equal the concentration of the hydrogen ion. And so the pH calculation would just be the negative log of this. So we could continue to do this five milliliters at a time until we reach the end point. At the end point, when we've added the exact number of moles of base as we started out with the number of moles of acid, we're not going to have anything in solution except water and the salt. So if we look here at the end point, we would have a pH equal to 7 because water is neutral and it has a pH of 7. This is only going to be when we have a strong acid and a strong base because these, the conjugate bases of strong acids do not affect the pH and the metal cations of strong bases do not affect the pH. So we'll know that we're at the end point when the moles of NaOH added equals the initial moles of acid that we started out with. So that's pretty easy. Initial moles of HCl. Past the end point will still do the calculations the same way. So I'm going to just write that here. After the end point, and again, this is for a strong acid strong base, we've got to keep that in mind. After the end point, we're still going to do the calculations the same way. So our moles of NaOH added is now going to be greater than the moles of our initial acid that we started out with in the flask. So we'll just subtract in the opposite order. And or if we get a negative number, we'll, we'll just know that that's excess OH. So we'll take the moles of the NaOH, which is still molarity of NaOH, times the volume of NaOH. Again, that has to be in liters. And then we'll subtract off the initial moles of acid. And what's left is the excess hydroxide in this case. And 
organisms that are still going to be in those. And so to calculate the pH, we're going to have to take the moles of excess sodium hydroxide and divide that by the total volume. So we'll always be adding the volume of our sodium hydroxide to the initial volume of the acid. And again, this has to be in liters, and this will be the concentration of the hydroxide. So the pH in that case is easy to calculate. That's going to be 14 minus the negative log of the hydroxide. Or you can just say 14 plus the log of the sodium hydroxide concentration. So on the next video, I'm going to have a problem where we start out with 25 milliliters of HCl with a certain concentration and we add sodium hydroxide to that. And we'll see that we end up getting a titration curve of the pH, if we plot the pH along the scale and uh, milliliters or NaOH added to the, to the HCl, and we'll get this pretty symmetrical curve. And then we'll something like that. It's not that symmetrical, but if we think about the initial picture, if we're taking the pH of our acid before we ever add any sodium hydroxide to that, we have a low pH. As we start adding milliliters of sodium hydroxide, our pH is going to change, and then we're going to make a large jump. And right here, this would correspond to pH of 7. So we're going to see a symmetrical curve, and the inflection point here is when the curvature of this line changes. The inflection point will be uh, the end point. So that's the end point. And that's when our moles of NaOH equals our moles of HCl. And then the pH would basically stabilize up here at probably about 12. So we'll, we'll do a calculation where we take the pH before we add any base, and then a few calculations where we're before the endpoint, when we are at the endpoint, there's no calculation to do. We'll have to just know that the pH would be 7. And then after the endpoint, this would be the excess hydroxide. So we'll do that on the next video.